right, you guys. Here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do a step-by-step -step instruction tutorial on how to build your speaker box. So the first thing you're always gonna do for any of our projects here, is start by getting a straight line on your material. So I've already preloaded, but I'll just open it up here for you to see. All right, we've got my material right here. I slid it under just enough. We're only going to take off about a sixteenth to an eighth of material, making sure we see material all the way along the track. We'll lower the track. <clears throat> Get our saw loaded and ready. Making sure that our electrical cord and our vacuum hose are on this, um, this side of the table, held back by our piece of wood there. So there's step one. Go ahead and cut your material, get a straight edge, and then Okay, now you've got a straight edge on one of your pieces. You're gonna wanna make sure that that straight edge is pushed right up against the fence here, and then pushed tight up against your stop as well. We're gonna set this to 17 inches. All right, 17 inches is essentially five and a half times three, because you're gonna need three pieces of five and a half, uh, with a little extra room for the soccer to happen. All right, so you'll set it to 17 inches, you'll set it tight, your saw's ready to go. You'll go ahead and cross cut this across the grain, 17 inches for that piece. All right, then after this, we're gonna head to the bandsaw. All right, here we are at the bandsaw, stage three. So we've already done our <coughs> straight edge from the Festool saw, and then we were over here doing our cross cut, getting it to 17 inches. So, Got our straight edge, we're at 17 inches, and now we're gonna come over here and set our bandsaw to five and three eighths inches. And so set it, lock down, ready to go. Using our push sticks, go ahead and make that happen. All right, now we have our 17 inch long, five and three eighths wide piece. We're gonna head back to the track saw and cut it to five and three eighths by five and three eighths, three different sections, and then we'll have our three pieces. All right, here we are back at the track saw. Got my piece, gonna make sure I get it on my straight edge side. <coughs> Setting it at five and three eighths. No more, no less. Tighten that down, clamp all the way until I hear it quick. Clamp down over here. Here we go. Nice Here our material. There we go. A nice clean square. Do that two more times. Nice and even so far. trash can. Okay, as you see here, we have three pieces, nice and even. What you want to do is make sure you line up the grain. Here's all the end grain, here's all the edge grain. Decide on what you want to have as the front, and once you've decided on the front, say I really like having this be my front, I'll flip them over, we're going to label these. So, top, Mid, bottom. Now, I have my organization set. So the top piece is the one we'll be cutting the slot in for the foam. The middle piece, we'll be cutting a shape like this where we use our template. That'll come out on the scroll saw. The bottom piece will just be solid. All right, here we go. Now we've got our pieces. Here's the phone that I want to be able to fit in my speaker box. I've measured this thing out. I measured the width and I found it to be two and a quarter inches. I'm gonna probably make my slot two and a half inches just so that it fits in there real nice. So the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna measure it out. First thing we need to do is find center. 
So all your pieces should be 5 and 3 eighths. To find center, we must divide 5 and 3 eighths in half. Half of 5 is 2 and a half. Half of 3 eighths is 3 sixteenths. So 2 and a half, 1, 2, 3. Right there. How do we check to see that we got that perfectly right? Well, it should measure 2 and 11 sixteenths when we go from center to the outside and from the other side to the center. All right, so that's pretty good. That's my center. Next, measure 3 quarters of an inch from the back of your board. Make another little mark. At this stage, I'll take a square and give a little extra there. Then, my phone, I wanted to do two and a half. Well, you don't want to measure two and a half from the center because then you're going to have your slot all to one side. So you have to then again split two and a half. To do that, half of two is one, half of a half is one quarter. So we're going to be at one and one quarter this direction, two and a half this direction. Okay? So that is going to be the end of our slot. There we go. Mark it out. And as you'll notice, I'm using a square, pressing tight so that all of my lines are square to the location. Next, I'll place my phone in here, give myself a little space, and there we go. There is the opening. We'll double check, make sure that that works. Looks like a pretty good fit. Here is your template for the centerpiece. This will be hidden right behind the lathe near the spindle seam. And that's where it should be returned when you're done with it as well. You'll set that on there and square it up as good as you can. And then trace the line. This is a pretty good shape. If you want to do something a little different, if you think that you have an idea for how you can boost the sound acoustically, then you can go ahead and try that. Before we go to the scroll saw, I should say, we want to drill holes so we can fit our scroll saw blade in here. Here I've picked out a drill bit that is big enough to fit the scroll saw blade in, but not too big to where it's bigger than the size of my cutout here. I'll cut two holes, one at either side. Looks like that. Now we're ready to go over to the scroll saw. All right, what I'm about to do is cut uh, my middle piece. And as you see, I've actually drawn some new lines that kind of round out that outer section right here. I just thought it'd be fun to add a little curve in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and go for this and we're gonna work on uh, just cutting this out on the scroll saw and then we'll sand it out. So, here we go. Okay, foot set. Let's be tight. nice shape overall. Um, as you noticed, I try to stay inside the line so that we can go and sand it. I'll be using the spindle sander mostly on those inside curves. Here we go. Now we're going to want to deal with this upper section. This is perhaps the trickiest part of the whole project. What you need to do is actually insert a scroll saw blade through one of your holes and you want to make sure the teeth are pointing down. Now, I'm going to set my piece on there, and you actually have to attach this scroll saw blade with it inside of your piece. So I'm going to get low here so that I can look down 
figure out that it's actually seated correctly in the detent and place it on the detent at the top and now tightening up the tension until we get the desired tight sound a little bit higher a little bit higher now here we go okay feel pretty good about that good now we've got that we're gonna go ahead and cut out this inside section Alright, so I've got the middle cut out. Now we'll have to loosen the tension. Get that blade out of there. Alright. There we go. Now got our bottom, middle, top. I had a range. Bottom, middle, top. Got our front, top. Cool. Right. Here we go. We've got our three pieces: top, middle, bottom. All lined up. The end, the grains are all the right direction because I had it labeled there and knew what I needed to do when I drew that out and did the template there. And after I did the scroll saw, I could spend some time with a file getting this all flat on the inside and nice and smooth. Now it's time to glue. Here are the keys to gluing. You're going to want to glue in a manner that there's glue sticking to all sides. The best way to do that for this project is since this is the smallest piece it has the most cut out of it, you're going to want to do what I just did here. Have all your pieces stacked the way you want it. Flip it. Glue this real nice. Get it all full. Use your finger a little bit. Get it all dialed in where you don't see any more wood. It's all glue. Then flip that onto this piece. Then glue this side. Similarly, get it all dialed in. The places you want to avoid a little bit are the edges so that not too much glue gets in there that you'll have to clean out later. And then you will add the bottom. Okay, now there's glue between each of your three pieces. You get it as lined up on all four sides as you can or split the difference as best you can. And then you're going to want to be suited with four clamps, one for each corner. Okay, now be careful because some of the clamps do not have a proper head on them. What you're looking for is a clamp that's not like this where there's only a, a ball on the end. Instead, you'll be looking for a clamp like this that has a pad. Okay, so once you've got your glue on there, you're gonna proceed to clamp it at all four corners. Now, as you do it, you might need to keep adjusting. See here how I've got that corner's lined up. It's flat here, it's flat there. And you'll proceed to do that for all four corners. After you get all the clamps on, you'll come back with paper towels and try and clean up as much glue as you can so that you have less work to do once it's glued up. Also, when you're done gluing, move your material away and see if there's glue on the white table. Pick up as much of that with paper towels as you can as well. Next, after that glues up, you probably need to wait at least an hour so it'll be your next class period we'll go into sanding and finishing this thing. 
Before using the orbital sanders, or any of the sanders for that matter, you're going to want to start with the jack planes on your pieces. Jack planes work only on the edge grain and not on the end grain. Okay. The jack plane is this tool here. This tool can take off just a slight amount of material um, <clears throat> each time it passes. So especially where the edge grain went through the bandsaw, this tool will do a great job taking off that little chatter that comes from the bandsaw. Starting with this, you're going to move over your pieces and just create a nice smooth finish on there. Keeping tough pressure all the way through. Okay. You do it to the one side with the <coughs> edge grain and see here. Let's see. Best way to show you. See that chatter that's still there? We're going to get rid of that right now. All right, see how much more smooth that is? And then we can take it to the sander and also take care of the end grain with the sander. All right, so we'll head to the sander. Okay, getting our piece back into the mold here. This here is the orbital sander. We're gonna start with a 100 grit pad or 80 grit. Then we're gonna to move to 150 and 220. You're gonna simply go easily over each side until you get uh, the 80 grit or 100 grit dialed in. Then you flip it, you get to each of your four sides with the 80 grit. Then once you've hit it with 80 grit and you don't feel any discrepancies between the wood, you'll switch to 150 and then 220 will finish it out real nice and get rid of all your scratches. So make sure you go in that progression and finish it out just how it ought to be. At this stage, you should be done with your project. Check in with your teacher and see how they like it. See if there's anything else you can add to it. Thank you for watching. This is the Music Box.